Welcome everyone to Forward Thinking, my new In Conversation TV series. I'm Associate Professor Art Phillips, and today's focus is entrepreneurship, the business, and work integrated learning. We have a very special guest today, Jan Preston, world-renowned pianist, composer, songwriter, known in Australasia as the queen of the boogie piano, due to her mastery of the 1930s boogie-woogie piano style. Originally classically trained, Jan has released dozens of albums, mostly in the boogie-boogie and blues style. She also has a long list, a multitude of credits, as a screen and score composer in feature films, television, advertising, and various multimedia platforms. Last year, Jan wrote and performed an album for my company, 101 Music Propriety Limited, a production music library called Piano Bar Saloon. It was a great pleasure to work with her. We'll talk a little bit about that today. Without further ado, I'd like to have a very warm welcome to Jan Preston. Thank you very much for coming. Hi, uh, thanks for having me. Good to see okay. you. Thank you so much. This is really, really exciting. We've known each other for quite a while. We um, have, yeah. yeah. I don't know how many years, maybe 30. Yeah, uh, I, think I, think, so. I think so, yeah. since the Australian Guild of Screen Composers yeah. was first formed, and I think we met at one of their first yeah. um, meetings. That's yeah. right, we did. That, that would have been late, probably late 80s. You were born and raised in New Zealand. Just talk about, you know, when you actually sort of began tickling the keys, I suppose, so to speak, and your passion for what you do. Um, yeah, look, my older sister and my older brother both played piano, and we were not a wealthy family, but my father, um, bless him, uh, got a, a piano, and I just took to it straight away. I just, from when, I, I can remember being so little I could barely reach the keys, so I must have been three, four, <laughs> maybe five. And from then I just played, and I, I've almost played every day of my life since then. Um, studied classical art because that was what you could learn yeah. back in, in the late 50s in a remote uh, South Island town in New Zealand. I mean, you learnt piano, you learnt classical. Um, and I love classical music. I still play classical music for, for enjoyment at home. Um, but my aunt, um, who had p performed for silent movies, um, I remember as a child seeing her, she had a cigarette out the side of her mouth and, and played boogie woogie and ragtime. And I wanted to play it, but I didn't know, nobody could show you. She showed me a few things. Okay, that's so, where it came from. Okay. Yeah, but much, much later, I did a five-year degree in classical piano. I did all the, the, the um, exams. And so I was a very dedicated classical pianist, yeah. and I have the classical technique. Chops, yeah, which is probably how and why you're so fluent in all the different styles of the boogie woogie, which we'll talk about all those styles later. Um, wow, okay, so when was the initial change, I suppose, from that early childhood and, and that learning into a, you know, where you actually realized this is actually a career that I want to do? When did that actually happen for you? Uh, probably when I finished my five-year um, university degree, conservatorium degree, which was a very strict, very narrow five-year classical piano degree. Right. So I know how to finger Bach partitas. You know, I know all sorts of stuff that I have never used in my career as such. But I also realised that I wanted to break out into other styles and that I couldn't earn a living. Um, to earn one's living art, as I'm sure you're aware, as a performing classical, particularly piano, which is a solo instrument. I mean, you can't even much get a job in an orchestra. It's almost impossible. You really have to be a teacher, and I didn't want to be a teacher. So I uh, sort of had a big change and uh, moved to Wellington, uh, in New Zealand and joined a, a theatre group and um, actually Sam Neill um, was involved with us for a while and he offered my first me my first job on a film oh, really? okay. when he was a director, documentary filmmaker, not an actor back then. Okay, so this was back in New Zealand, yeah? Back in New Zealand, right. yeah, in the early 70s. Right. So. Um, we had no idea that Sam had aspirations to be an actor. Wow, okay. And he so. worked for the New Zealand Film Unit. So mm -hmm. 
that got me into composing and the theatre group because I was musical director. Had to keep coming up with things. We were very, very popular. We did um, cabaret shows. So that opened me out, but it was also earning. I was also earning. All I've ever wanted to do, and I think what, what most people really want to do, is be a working musician. Yeah. I mean, a small percentage of people in, in the arts um, make a lot of money and are hugely successful, mm. but it's a very small percentage. And I think that in itself is, um, you know, quite an achievement in Australasia, oh. in Australia and New Zealand. Absolutely, anywhere in the world, but also especially here because it's a smaller territory, of course. How do you keep that focus, you know? Because cause some people have a big problem sort of juggling between the creative and the entrepreneurial sort of aspects. But I guess it's a day-to-day -day thing for you as well. Right? Well, that's right. I mean, what I would say to anybody coming up and trying to get a niche somehow, a boutique career, if you like, um, the first thing is keep going. <laughs> <laughs> One way or another. Yeah, persevere, determination. You have to just keep going because it's very easy in the arts and entertainment to look into nothingness, to look into no work um, that you've either created yourself or you've been um, invited to do. So you have to try and just keep putting one foot in front of the other, be flexible um, and uh, also understand that often and this was said to me by a guy years and years and years ago who managed split ends at the time and gave me a managerial advice. And he said to me, Jan, never forget, there's an industry set up out there to say no to you. Because if they've said no, they've got rid of you. But if they say yes to you, they have to follow up. And it's often really and honestly not personal at all that you don't get the job, whatever it is. Um, the other thing I would say very strongly in this frightening, heartbreaking, unregulated and very difficult industry, let's face it, yeah. arts and, and entertainment, is you are selling profile. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much of a creative genius you are at home, in your own sitting room, if you think, and it's the same for so many industries, if you think you're selling food or you're selling your acting ability or you're selling your paintings or you're selling your music or your compositions or your songs, you are not. You are selling your profile. And if you have no profile, you have nothing to sell. Mm. It's really all about business. And talent is super important. But without the business skill set, those people who are talented, unfortunately, fall by the wayside and they, they don't actually get to the point where they need to get. It is about profile and it's about marketing yourself, isn't it? And these are all the things that I've watched you do over the years, you know, the 30 or 40 years that I've, I've actually known you, you know? And I've always said three things in my life. FDP stands for focus, determination, and perseverance, you know? You keep that up no matter what because you're going to have hurdles all the time. You end up, you know, finding a path. Well, it's sink or swim, <laughs> That's it. isn't it, really? Yeah. I mean, I didn't used to be good with the audience. I didn't know how, how to um, engage them. And you learn that, and if you don't, you won't you have an over. audience. Yeah. I mean, it's your audience. Everything that gives you your career, everything or the, the, the people on that film that want to use you again, it's like any, somebody running a plumbing business or an, uh, uh, their own electrical or freelance cinematographer or whoever they are, it's repeat business. Absolutely. And if you can't get rebooked, you have no career, yeah. um, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. So being your own boss and being in, in, in control of your own career and your own destiny, um, that's an entrepreneur. So you have always been an entrepreneur in your life, you know? It just happens to be in the creative arts. Um, but it's all the same, isn't it? So being your own boss and the discipline involved with that and the awareness of all that and the focus of all that. Well, I often think I could manage somebody else I quite well. 
if you're looking for a manager out, <laughs> um, you know, I've, I've learned these skills. I've had to learn these skills. I wanted to be a working musician and I was prepared to do whatever it would take. And, they, and that is the entrepreneurial side of it, yeah. to think, what have I got? What used to be called um, in the old days of record companies, your USP, your unique selling point. Yes, that's right. And this is the thing. You have to have a belief in yourself and total, uh, what, what were the three things you said? Determination and perseverance focus. and focus. You have to have that. Yeah. If you haven't got that, just don't even bother yeah. trying. But you have to have that, that self-belief and then you have to think, what is it? What have I got that a hundred other piano players, probably better, and singers, and composers, or whatever else, songwriters, better than me, but what have I got that they haven't got? And how can I sell that aspect yeah. of who I am? That's right. USP, yeah? Unique selling position, yeah. All of a sudden, one day you got a phone call or, or an email from the UK, from the BBC, I believe, yeah? And I said to my sister, this never happens in, in the arts. And she said, well, Jan, it just did. I got an email through my website uh -huh. from a guy who said, my name's George Burton. I'm entertainment producer with the BBC in London. I thought, yeah, sure you are. And I'm ready to delete uh, the email. <laughs> that, yeah. and, but it turned out, in fact, he was. And, and we are using, because, of course, anybody can use any music that you've written, so long as they pay their, their copyright to uh, inform APRA. Um, uh, anyway, we are using your um, music. Uh, it's a blues piano instrumental called the Trout Blues, which I recorded as a kind of extra track on a record many, many years ago. Mm. I guess they heard it <clears throat> through Spotify. We are using this as the title music to our BBC London um, new show. A radio show? Is it's it? a radio show that I take it as sort of, um, it's like talk back and music and stuff, yeah. like ABC radio, okay. yeah. local radio here. And um, anyway, they had had it on air for about three or four months. And I think what, then they, they did a survey with their listeners. Uh -huh. What do you think of our theme music? Uh -huh. And they got this overwhelmingly positive response Good for you. to it. Oh, we love that piece uh -huh. of music. And uh, extraordinarily, it's two minutes, 43 seconds long, and they play the whole thing. Did they really? Well, Every that's... Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night. For a theme, that's really quite unusual, yeah. It is. Long, I, yeah. I thought it'd be 10 or 20 seconds it's or 40 seconds, and they talk over the top of it. So it's very nice uh, income stream and royalties, as you can imagine. But, um, yeah, so this is what I'm, I'm saying about keep going. Yeah, yeah. You never, never know. know. You just, if you keep going and you've got something out there, if you're not out there, the point is you're not out there and somebody else is. Hmm. So you've got, you're not propelling yourself and your profile forward. Yeah. Opportunities are great. And, of course, there's hurdles and there's disappointments, you know, when this happens for you, um, I mean, it could be anything. I mean, it could be COVID. It could be, uh, you know, an injury. It could be, um, you know, sort of anything that could actually happen, you know. You're always aware of that, and, and you're always thinking, and you're always looking for when a hurdle comes up, there's got to be a change that has to happen or something you have to do to overcome that. Well, I think not having all your eggs in one basket, because if all your eggs are in one basket and that basket is dropped, you have nothing. So I think freelancing, to have lots of connections, to be flexible, to um, you know work a 16-hour day sometimes because the following week you're not working at all. Jan has done a lot of work for other people, very collaborative in terms of being a screen composer and actually writing for another project. And... Uh, I love that part of it, as I know you do, because because we actually help propel a story, as opposed to just a product that we write for our own sake. We actually write a product that actually suits to heighten the actual story. This is really what I wanted to talk about today was, you know, talk about your passion 
in the collaborative process and talk about how you work around a brief. Well, the first thing I do is I, I listen and I think about it and I watch the film. And I, as far as I'm concerned, all roads lead to Rome and that's the director. It's the director, it's their vision, yeah. pretty much of all the projects I've worked on. Um, and so I listen and I, I, I've noticed that um, I've seen some, some composers working, younger composers, and, and uh, you know, they're, they're looking at, at the film or they're looking at something on the computer. I have a notebook and I look at the director. So if you were my director and you were saying, this needs to be cold, calculating, troubling, blah, blah, or uplifting, or these were, I write it down. And then I enter the world of that film. That's what it comes down to. What we are doing as composers is a musical representation of the world of that film, somehow or other. However nebulous that is to try and represent. Now, we've all written screeds of music that did not end up on the film for the very reason, not that it wasn't great music, but it didn't work in the film, it didn't suit the film, it was reinforcing the right, the wrong thing in the film, either in terms of the atmosphere or the story or the characters or whatever. So that's the trick with film composition. Yeah. Do you believe that the best musical scores are the ones that you walk into a movie theater and you're taken away by the, the storyline and the script and the film and you're not even realizing what the music is and you walk out and you say, where you're humming the piece then, as opposed to realizing, oh, that's an amazing score during the film. I mean, I, you know. Absolutely. Okay. I yeah. mean, it's, it's everything. It's music, sound effects, dialogue. Yeah. And film is an audio-visual medium. medium. It is half audio and half visual. Yeah. And so the way those three things, sound effects, uh, dialogue, and music work, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's the film. I hate being aware of the music. Normally when I'm aware of the music, it's not working for no, me. That's right, yeah, because it is a journey. And I mean, I've always believed the exact same thing is that, you know, that's, that's really what it's all about. I've always said, if you're a score composer, you're, you are the accompanist for a Barbara Streisand. That's what you are. You are not the focus. It's not your spotlight, is it? No, mm. that's right, exactly. I mean, I've seen some horrific, <laughs> sort of unbelievable scenes where on the first meeting the composer's saying, oh, I don't know about that edit there. Hey, hey. baby, it's their film, you know. That's exactly right. Um, yeah. I mean, you, you're there, you're a hired pen. Mm. You'll confer occasionally with the director and you'll play things to the director as you go? How does that work for you? Yeah, well, the first thing I do is I try and get a composition. Now, when I worked on the ABC Dynasty series, which was just a horrendous schedule, as I'm sure you've, they are, yeah. you've done yeah. with, with TV series, yeah. where I, on the Thursday I watched the film, Thursday afternoon I rushed home and, and started composing. Yeah. Friday they came and listened to the composition and if it was anyway right and we had the spotting session and then over the weekend and Monday, you know, it was crazy. I was doing sort of one a week. So um, pretty well in all of those and there were um, uh, eight, six series of eight, so 48 um, programs. Um, and some of it I think is my best music. It's sort of a blur. I, hear it out and I go, oh, that sounds familiar. Oh, that's right, that's my music. But in all of those, I think there was one program where I had to pull a producer in on a Saturday right. and say to him, yeah, the executive impossible. producer who was terrific to give the briefs. Um, and I said, Tim, I just, I just can't find anything that really works. And he said something to me and it... Right, oh, okay, see you, bye, yeah. <laughs> just quickly, oh, I've got an idea. Yeah. But um, So I like to get 
the basic composition or compositions, and then it's all about uh, theme and variation for me. That's yeah. how I work. You play how you are. You compose how you are. It can your music can only ever be an extension of yourself. Um, so I I hope that in playing uh, the Piano Bar Saloon series that I've brought something a little different from what can be heard. of lifelong learning, lifelong learning. You know, when you stop learning and being open to changes and being aware of what's going on, you know, that doesn't work in business, especially in our business. I think in any business, really. Is that true? You have to always be doing that. doesn't matter what age you are, how long you've been doing it. You have to be moving forward and reinventing yourself, experiencing new Backwards. things creatively. Of course you find your style and your abilities and, and your path, yeah. but you have to be. And if you are doing that, then you can have longevity in your career. And I also think that people know, anybody knows, when you care and when you mean it and when it's a job. And sadly, a lot of very talented people get to the point where they've been freelancing for as long as I have, 50 years and beyond, where they don't want to do it anymore. They, they've done everything. And uh, honestly, I can understand that. Well. But for myself, I, I'm terrified of retirement mm -hmm. because I love it and because I'm getting better, yeah. I'm, believe it or not, I'm still getting better yeah, well, at yeah. what I'm doing. And yeah. if you stick at something, you do get better. And as a result of that, you get work yeah, exactly. and an income. Mm. A, a retirement? No, 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 no. It, <laughs> it doesn't work. I don't believe it. And of course, you don't believe it. Do you know everybody that, that Jan Preston is absolutely a brilliant pianist? I mean, her, her ability and her chops are just um, second to none if that's a... A statement but you still take piano lessons and when Jan told me this when she was doing my album I said what do you mean you're going to take a piano lesson Thursday we can't meet why she said well I have to go to, and see my piano teacher when I say I have piano lessons I mean my teacher isn't telling me no. how to play the piano that's right because I know how to do that but she's showing me um, improvisatory uh, things and aspects and chords and grooves and keeping me moving forward yeah. within the style of what I'm doing. That's right, yeah. Um, and it's been absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really important. I think workshops and um, anything, my the, the singing, um, I think my latest album has my best singing and... Um, a, a woman here in Sydney runs singing workshops in Newtown uh, just about half a dozen times a year, and they're fabulous. She all sing in a group. Yeah. And um, I, I think that's really important yeah. because it's hard to... You can sit down at the piano, at your instrument, or at your computer for composing, and just do the same thing over and over. Whereas if you've got somebody that you're meeting and you're going, ah, and you look yeah. and go, well, I wouldn't play it like that, but that's interesting. So again, it's keeping that creative thrust forward, growth. Yeah, so important. Jan, it's been just absolutely fantastic to have you here. Thank you for your time and, and, and sharing your expertise to both the creatives and the business world. I hope you enjoyed Forward Thinking. Uh, until the next time, all the best and um, have a good evening.